We have water quality data from August 7th, 8th, and 9th from La Plata County. And it shows that the levels have returned to pre-event conditions. We've also diverted um, additional uh, effluent or wastewater that's coming out of that mine and it's being treated before it's being redeposited into the river so that we do have the mine under control at this point as far as I know. As you know as the plume goes down it's begun to disperse and it's being done naturally. It's also being done because we've taken some action at Navajo Dam to actually increase the flow there to help that dispersion so that we are working with this to make sure that downstream while it's no longer visible because it's being dispersed, that we're taking the necessary tests and we're taking a look at wildlife, fish, all the kind of work that we need to do and responding to folks for drinking water and, and cattle water and those kinds of things. But, but I cannot give you exact dates on when things will happen because, again, we're going to let the testing and the science drive those decisions working with our partners. Today you are out of government after 35 years of, of a job. <laughs> Thank you for giving me a job here. That was really nice of you. <laughs>。This EPA safety crew who's supposed to be cleaning up this abandoned Colorado mine accidentally sent more than 3 million gallons of chemical filled wastewater pouring into this river. Uh, it is even worse than first thought. Along the Animus River, a state of emergency. Three million gallons of toxic sludge has spewed from the Gold King Mine in Colorado. For six days, the mustard glow winding, working its way 100 miles downstream, slowly clearing. Tell us what's in the water. Tell us what's in the water. Anger and frustration boiling over at community meetings because the EPA, the very agency tasked with protecting the environment, triggered the breach during a cleanup. Many get their drinking and irrigation water from the river. I have a place in the valley now too. I live about a hundred yards away from the river. The soupy sludge contains lead levels 3,500 times higher than normal. Copper, zinc, arsenic also found. The EPA still conducting tests as three ponds have been built to hold back the tainted wastewater. You're lying to everyone about what's going on. You really don't know what's going on at all. Though these yellow ribbons are fading, pollutants are moving downstream, headed towards Arizona and the Grand Canyon. But somebody will be held responsible for the spill. Sure. Yes. Thank you for bringing a sample on by this morning. Many are bringing in their tap water to be tested. While Colorado's Parks and Wildlife Department says fish and test traps are still alive. One good sign among a sea of worry. It makes me sick to my stomach. It's horrid. You know, it's a tragedy. They now hope to reopen this river next week. But the long-term damage here, that remains unclear. In communities like Durango, they have shut down the intake valves that lead water from the river into the city. And while it looks fairly clear from the surface, I want to show you just below the water what it looks like. Dip your hand down just an inch or so, and you will see that gold mustard colored silt. This is the reason that officials are so concerned. It's safe to touch with a plastic glove, but officials don't want the public getting in this water. By 7 a.m., people were already lined up at this Farmington, New Mexico water testing site. So if ours is dirty, everything downstream is dirty. They brought water by the gallon and the jug. At this point, until we get any results, we're saying, you know, don't use the water. Residents like Carl Clips also brought a little anger and frustration. 
I think something should be done that people that's responsible should have to, you know, should have to do something for it. The EPA says the plume of the spill has traveled more than 100 miles through parts of Colorado and New Mexico since Wednesday and is headed for Utah next. But the source of the spill, this abandoned gold mine, hasn't been plugged yet and is spilling out at a rate of 500 gallons per minute, carrying high levels of toxic metals. Initial EPA estimates say at its peak, the plume carried at least 200 times more arsenic and 3,500 times more lead than is considered safe for drinking. Ryan Flynn heads up the New Mexico Environment Department, which is running its own testing center separate from the EPA. We were really frustrated with, with EPA. Well, first and foremost, they didn't tell us about it for 24 hours, and so that's just unacceptable. James Atkinson came to the testing center today because he depends on well water from the river for everyday life. If you don't have your well water, what are you going to do? Take my chances. Do you have any other resources no, for water? No. How do they fix this? Uh, Brooke, the EPA has been extremely tight-lipped about this because they're typically not the ones that are on the side that caused the accident or have to clean it up. But again, in Durango, I mean, the tourist industry and recreational industry is shut down now for the summer. River is shut down because of high levels of, of arsenic as well. It's not just zinc and copper and lead. They're not sure how bad it is. Originally, the EPA said when they went to investigate this mine, which has been shut down, the Gold King Mine, since the 1920s, 20s, they were there just to try to take care of a small leak. We know now that possibly this leak has been going on and spilling maybe 50 to 250 uh, gallons per minute for many, many years. They said 1 million gallons were dispersed by accident. And now we know from the USGS, who has better ways of determining the debris and flow, just saying, no, it is 3 million. It's the Gold King Mine. It's up near Telluride, not too far. And it makes its way down. It's called the Cement Creek into the Animus River, goes through Durango. Again, that's high recreation area. Now into New Mexico, where it meets the San Juan River. Right now, New Mexico's under a state of emergency as well. If it continues, it may makes its way to, uh, of course, the uh, Colorado River. And even mm. further from that, it's Lake Powell, which is drinking water for cities such as Vegas and San Diego and L.A. Thunderstorms are starting to help disperse some of it, and we know it's getting a little bit better in some regions. But if I break it down for you, it really is amazing. Think of personal water wells right now. They're being tested. Irrigation for farmers, not to mention hundreds of thousands of livestock right now that use this and irrigation for the farmers. So the gold mine had a leak now. We, we expect or have to think for years. But this yeah. went in and it's a problem and now they're not sure what they're going to do and they're not sure how bad the water levels really are. There's that good old saying, if you live in a glass house, you shouldn't throw stones. And the EPA has been very good at throwing stones at private industry. Doesn't seem to be so good at managing its own affairs. Yeah. If this were a private sector company doing it, They'd be calling for the resignation of the CEO. They'd probably talk about bringing criminal charges. They'd be doing all kinds of things. They'd sue the, they get the bejesus suit out of them, right. too. And I bet nobody will lose his job over this. Well, that, that, that's an important point. I mean, where is the accountability? Look at these pictures. There's arsenic in this, in this river right now as a result of this waste and this right. mistake by the EPA. Heads should roll. They should, but I didn't see anything in their press release any holding anybody accountable void showering drink any any type of bodily contact with that water this is our lifeblood governors of colorado and new mexico have declared states of emergency towns are shutting down pipes that normally take clean river water into people's homes yeah where i live it's all basically living off the wells. The plume turned the normally clear waters into an unnaturally bright yellow after the spill, traveling more than 100 miles from Colorado into New Mexico, now into Utah, headed towards Arizona and the Grand Canyon. The EPA is testing the water, even using fish to monitor the health impact on wildlife. But the agency has been criticized for not providing more information about the long-term health impacts on people. Tests show the water carrying 300 times the safe levels of arsenic and 3,500 times the lead. Now the rivers and the businesses that rely on them are shut down in the middle of peak summer season until at least next week. 95% of my business has been swept away and we have about 23 employees that are currently out of work.
In Washington, D.C., Tuesday, EPA Administrator Gina McCarthy apologized for the spill. It pains me to no end to see this is happening, but we're working tirelessly to respond, and we've committed to full review of exactly what happened. New video has surfaced from the EPA of the Gold King mine spill back in early August. For the first time, we're seeing exactly what happened that day and hearing how EPA workers reacted. Taken in the moments just after the EPA accidentally caused a massive spill of toxic water near Silverton, Colorado, cell phone video captures confused contractors looking on as mine waste flows into the Animus River. The orangey yellow water doesn't surge at first, but it quickly grows in strength. Is he going to go close it up? What are we doing now? The videos were released by the EPA and posted individually to their website. At least three times in the videos, you hear a long tone covering up something said by the contractors. It's unclear what. Get a little video of this, I suppose. Another video posted by the EPA shows an unnamed contractor explaining what happened. He says the workers were removing unstable dirt from the front of the mine and dumping it when they hit the wrong spot. Actually, we thought it was coming down. We thought we'd open up a spring. Just coming out of the rock here. In the shorter video montage, contractors make comments about how they were excavating the dirt. We're digging really high. I know, we're about 20 feet up. At one point, a contractor opens a door to a vehicle. It's flooded with the toxic waste. Eventually, they leave the site. And continue recording as they drive off, capturing the start of a major disaster that tainted rivers in three states. All right, thank you, Madeline. The EPA announced this week it will set up a $1.8 million temporary treatment plant in Colorado to prepare for winter. They say what they're doing now to treat the water won't work in freezing temperatures. It was 1 million, then oops, it was really 3 million tons and still going. Locals and state officials still search for answers. They had zero uh, mining engineers on the EPA staff, so they don't, don't even have the professionals to be able to actually administer what they are supposed to. Documents from a year ago revealed the EPA knew of the risk. Uh, the fact is the EPA did not follow procedures. They did not follow the customs and practices that they should have. We asked the EPA why they never tested water and pressure levels. Their response, site conditions, made it difficult to drill and determine pressure. A similar technique was implemented at the Captain Jack mine in Colorado and did not result in a blowout. The EPA took full responsibility and it hasn't gone unnoticed. I'm actually really glad that uh, the EPA is here trying to fix the problem. A problem that spread fast. About 36 hours later, there was a plume of orange water making its way down the river to us here in Durango. We saw it come in. It was terrible looking. It was heartbreaking, actually. It's left an impact on Durango's economy. Business has been definitely affected as far as like walk in, um, just retail here. And an impact on its health. There were some heavy metals that did test at high. Um, high contamination. The San Juan Basin Health Department has been working with several agencies to test the Animus River for the past few months following the spill. As the EPA works at this water treatment facility, locals are worried it could happen again. It should not have happened. Attorneys for the EPA and U.S. Justice Department say more than 70 claims made after the spill don't meet the proper requirements for payment. Many were filed by farmers on the Navajo Nation who lost crops after pollution in the San Juan River forced them to stop irrigating. The EPA spilled more than 3 million gallons of mine waste into southwestern waterways a year and a half ago. It was ruled human error. The agency says it's taken responsibility and contamination has returned to pre-spill levels. Tribal leaders and other elected officials, however, are still concerned about water quality. Those who've been denied claims will have six months to challenge the decision in U.S. District Court. Historically, most lawsuits against the government are prohibited under the doctrine of sovereign immunity. Oh, we have a new administration in that has vastly different priorities about the environment. And so as you're viewing the developments that seem to be coming almost daily, tell, tell us your feelings, your thoughts on this, and how do we keep this all in perspective as we move forward? 
Well, I think we made some significant leaps and bounds over the past eight years in the Obama administration, you know, on climate change in particular, but also on clean air and clean water. And obviously, those are important uh, commitments to keep to the American public. That's why EPA is around. We're essentially a public health agency. That's what we do for a living. And so I'm, I'm understandably upset about the idea that EPA's role could be so significantly diminished and that there is continued talk and commitment to roll back some of the ver progress we made um, towards clean air and clean water. So Gina, thank you so much for your service. It's great to have you at the school. Uh, and we are delighted to have you here, the studio audience, and round of applause for Gina McCarthy. Thank you, Howard.